What are you doing here? Well, I wanted to help you. Help me? A girl out here chasing murder and bandits? Well, you're liable to get your fool head shut off. I can take care of myself. Looks like nobody can take care of nothing around here, including myself. I'm just about to give up. No luck at all, huh? I haven't seen a thing of them varmints. Ruth. There's two of them. They've been wearing masks, Dad. That don't make no difference. They're strangers and they look suspicious to me. What are you going to do? I'm going to dry gun some. You stay back. But, Dad, you'll only get into trouble again. Stay where you are and reach. A woman. A woman that can shoot, mister. Drop your guns and put up your hands. Never argue with a lady, Dick, especially when she's got the drop on you. We'll put ours away, ma'am. Hey, Dad, I've got them. You've got us, but why? You couldn't be on your way to hold up the freight wagon, could you? What freight wagon? Keep your hands up, you two. Ruth, you had not have done this. Why not? It worked. It might not have. And you always disarm a man after you catch him. Ryder? Let him have it, Dick. Looks like he's the sheriff, and the lady still has a beat on us. Well, I ain't rightly the sheriff, but I'm in charge while he's sick. Now, mister, give me your pistol. And anyhow, what business is it of yours? We don't mind being arrested. We just want to know what for. They don't look like outlaws to me, Dad. Well, we're not. Well, we'll see about that. I'm herding them into town, Ruth. You ride over and tell Bert it's safe to bring the wagon through. I hope you're right. Now head for Crooked Fork. But, but that's out of our way. It was out of your way, Sonny. Get going. When that girl gets out of there, we can go. Cover up, boys. Let's do a good job on that outfit today. Yes, Terry, I'm going to bring law and order to this range. What's your trouble, Sheriff? The loot, like you. The rest of your gang. Now listen, Sheriff. They must be attacking Bert. I knew we'd caught the wrong man. Give us our guns and we'll help you. Dad, I believe. Come on.
the driver all right? No, he's dead. I sure guess I made another serious mistake, boys. Right after Sheriff Cox got sick and I took over. Well, I have to agree. Somebody's out to get you, Sheriff. Stop calling me Sheriff. I'm sick of looking at this badge. Okay, then I'll just call you cheerful. But I still agree. Somebody's out to get you and the line. Is the freighting from this town profitable? Profitable? We're lucky if we make expenses. Well, then there's got to be some other reason. We're representing the citizens of Crooked Fork, Cheerful, and we want to talk to you. Well, talk ahead, even if I do know what you're going to say. As long as you're a temporary sheriff, the town wants action against these outlaws. Well, I took action today, but I caught the wrong ones. I want you to meet the range rider, Dick West. This is Wynn Cooper. Hello. Howdy, yes, sir. Cheerful made a little mistake today. We just tried to help him out. Cheerful makes too many mistakes, and they're not little. What do you want, Cooper? We want Cheerful to resign as deputy in charge, for one thing. Now, just a minute, Cooper. All I need is a little more cooperation from the town folks. You'll never get it. Nobody has any confidence in you. All right. I'll show you. I'll deputize the range rider and Dick here. Well, thanks, Cheerful, but... Well, I don't think the people would appreciate you deputizing a couple of strangers that you don't know anything about. No hard feelings, Ryder, but I think that's the way the folks at Crooked Fork could feel. I don't care if you all leave Dad in the lurch. I'm not going to let him resign. No, honey. Dad, don't you see? You couldn't hold your head up again. That's right. And I'll help you, Miss Ruth. I mean, cheerful, even if the Range Rider won't. Okay, suit yourself. But the town is through with you and your freight line. From now on, nobody's shipping anything by your wagon. But you have to. No, we don't. I'm heading a committee to form a new line. We'll use my freight wagon, and we'll see that it gets plenty of protection. I don't understand why you couldn't give Cheerful's wagon the same protection. <laughs> You're a stranger here, Ryder. You haven't put up with years of his blunders. Missing schedules, forgetting things, misleading posses as a deputy. I guess that, that's kind of true, Ryder. He's a failure as a deputy and as a shipper. And we're not going to trust him when times are tough like this. So long. You know, I don't like the looks of that Cooper. Is he a big bug here in town? Just about the biggest. He owns the store and the hotel. What reason might he have for wanting to get you out of the way? Me? No reason. He only deals in big profits. I don't know why you're so interested. You had a chance to help Dad and you wouldn't. I said I wouldn't be deputized. I didn't say I wouldn't stick around and help. Well, sure we will. And we'll get to the bottom of it, too. I, I mean, the writer will. It's no use making the trip, Dad. We haven't anything to carry. I still think Cooper's bluffing. You're wasting your time driving to Copper Springs. You mean you're going to put me out of business? It's your own fault. I'm just too doggone stubborn to stand for it. I'm going to drive to Copper Springs, too. And there's a load, I'm going to bring it back. Not if my wagon gets there first. And I'm sending the boys along to protect it. But, Dad... Don't worry about me, Ruth. I'll be the first one there and the first one back. Hello, Dad! Huh? 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 I hate to do this, Ruth. But your father's had all the chances he deserves. He'll be all right, Ruth. Dick and I'll go along. Thanks, Ryder. We can't help him get to Copper Springs first, but we can take care of the outlaws if they show up. You think they won't? I have an idea they won't want to bother Cooper's wagon as much as they did Cheerful's. Riding Cheerful's wagon today. What's the idea? Cheerful is practically out of business. What if he finds out what you're after? He won't. 
We're riding out now to meet that messenger I've been waiting for. Why are you keeping such a secret about this messenger? <laughs> I'm a businessman, Higby. I got a tip on how I can make some nice money. I never talk until the time is right. Get mounted. There is my messenger. Calvary? That's right. What do you want us to do, lock horns with the army? The army? <laughs> One soldier. I'll ride down and see if it's my man. If it is, I want you to get him out of the way for a while. Well... You're being well paid, Higby. The signal will be this. If I give it, ride down and grab him. The army won't know who to look for, if you wear your masks. Howdy. Howdy, Sergeant. Headed for Crooked Fork? That's where I'm going. My name is Cooper. I own the freight wagon line there. You do, eh? <laughs> That's funny. You're the man I'm looking for. Me? Well, in a way, the Army's setting up a cavalry post there, and we'll need a civilian contractor to haul supplies. Well, then I'm your man. As a matter of fact, we can sign the contract right here. That is, if you have it with you. Oh, I've got it with me, all right. Quartermaster sent me on with it. But I have to take it in for competitive bids, government regulations. I'm afraid you won't find much competition in a place like Crooked Fork. Well, I know that, but I got these stripes for obeying orders, whether they make sense or not. Sure. Well, I'm out here looking for a stray horse. I'll see you in town later. Okay, Cooper. We can make the deal then. You two stay here. We can handle it. Shots came from the hills. They ain't bothering us. We ought to look, though, hadn't we, Ryder? You bet. Remember, cheerful, save your speed for the home stretch. <laughs> He's got the contract I want, and it's worth a fortune. Get into the shack, keep him there till I tell you to let him go. Let him go? Why don't you just take the contract? It's a government deal. It has to be done legitimately. I can't get it as long as Cheerful's still operating. But I'll fix that tonight. When do we let the soldier go? After Cheerful's taken care of? What do you see? Fresh tracks. One rider. Something interesting happened right here. For once, I beat you to it, Ryder. Look what I found. For a cartridge, good work. What caliber? 45. Guess I'm not so bad at this tracking after all. Now all you have to do is tell me who fired it. Well, you don't even know that. It was fired by a trooper from the United States Cavalry. Oh, now you're kidding me. I've got second sight, didn't you know? Well, I found something, too. A brass button with cross sabers on it. And they're only worn on the uniforms of the United States Cavalry. Well, what do you suppose happened? Well, my second sight doesn't tell me that. But it's my guess that the man we were following was a trooper, and he jumped him right here. That gang. Come on, let's get on their trail. Well, they split and went two ways. We better check on Cheerful. He should be on his way back from Crooked Fork by now. Ryder, they're on 
the way home. Copper Springs. The only reason I won coming home was because he got a load and I didn't. That sure is a button off a cavalry uniform. But what would a cavalry man be doing here? What does it mean? I don't know, but I'm sure interested in finding out. You know what? I bet Cooper knows something about it. I'll string along with Dick, cheerful. But if Cooper is behind this, we don't want to give him any warning. I'll ride him. I know that Cooper is money mad, but There's he... no money in the freight line. Well, if he wants it, I'll bet there's some money somewhere. Good evening. How are you in? The boys tell me you heard some shooting and went for a look, Ryder. See anything? There wasn't anything on the range that we could find. But there was shooting, and it was probably the gang. And our sheriff wasn't on the job. I've got a right to make a living, haven't I? Our man picked up a load in Copper Springs today. How'd you do? You know. You don't have to rub it in. I didn't mean it that way, Ruth. I just want your father to know for his own sake that he's licked. For my own sake? Yes. I have a proposition to make you so that we can run the line and get the time behind it. Always listen to a proposition, cheerful. I'll buy your equipment. We'll operate both wagons. You will? Well, now, I'll give that some consideration. Dad! But cheerful! Wait a minute. Dick and I have been thinking about buying into your line ourselves, cheerful. Say, the writer and I could take care of those outlaws all right. Well, you would? Well, I'd make you a mighty handsome deal. You see, Cooper, Dick and I have been looking around for some place to invest a little money and settle down. Now, if it looks like a good proposition for you, why, it should be for us. Well, it's not that. I'm just doing it to help the town out. Well, the town shouldn't mind if the writer owned it. No one's got anything against him. No, no, sure not. Why don't you take until morning to think it over, cheerful? That's the thing to do, Dad. Okay. Just as long as it's straightened out one way or the other, no hurry. So long. See you tomorrow. First time I heard you say anything about settling down, Ryder. But didn't you mean what you said? You did, didn't you? Listen, folks, I'm playing for time. What I'm trying to do is worry Cooper into showing his hand. But you'll have your freight line with or without us. Come on, Dick. I don't care what the range rider said. I'm plumb discouraged. And I ain't gonna make another trip to Copper Springs. But, Dad, you'll never do any more business. I don't care. I'm not going. George. Go tell Al to hook up the team. I'll drive to Copper Springs myself. Then right out and tell Higby to look out for the range rider and his friend. Find out who that is.
jackass is leading right up here. We gotta clear out. You know, those men left in such a hurry, they might have forgotten something. What? a soldier. He's with Dick. He's got a government contract for freighting, cheerful, but you can't get it unless you're still in business. Cooper just left for Copper Springs. And we're leaving, too. Come on. Set then, Sergeant. That's right, sir. Thanks to Ryder. And Dick, Sergeant, both of you. Oh, by the way, before we go, Sergeant, here's something that belongs to you. By the button off my uniform. Now, where'd you find that? Oh, that's a long story, Sergeant.